Good morning, folks. Well, here's the latest X-ray flux. It took planets aligning and twin sun diving comets, but the Earth-facing quiet has now opened the gate to flares and CMEs. And by the way, NOAA now agrees with NASA about a February 15th impact for that CME two nights ago. More on that in a moment. The solar flaring has pretty much all come from that one northern sunspot group, but how about this? We get a few flares, a CME comes at Earth, and all of a sudden the sun's got his chest puffed out, cheeks sucked in, and is flexing best he can over on the incoming limb at the equator. It looks equally remarkable in 171 angstroms. Umbral fields, coronal fields, and those connecting to mesospot regions are interacting beautifully. Definitely a significant eruption threat if it can make it a few more days and turn in to face Earth. Coming to spaceweathernews.com, we actually find a relatively calmer day on our star. The solar flares did crack up into M-class range, but they were impulsive and did not produce CMEs like the one we saw two nights ago. The sunspots look vastly more complex, however. Size hasn't changed, but those polarities look like a rugby scrum, and that's what drives flaring the most, magnetism collision. More flares wouldn't shock me. Of course, it is turning away to the right, along with the lead extension of that dark coronal hole you see. You may recall it had an equatorial bulb out ahead of it three days ago. Well, it set a stream our way that swept past Earth last night. As you see, high-density readings in orange followed after their drop-off by a quick rises up in solar wind speed and temperature in yellow and green below. If NOAA and NASA are correct about impact two days from now, then level 1 storms are probably all we're going to see, but if we do get that impact tomorrow instead, it could couple with the coronal hole stream to give us moderate or even medium range disruptions. Let's check the top articles and begin with solar flares. These folks think it's about inflow of energy to the sun from specific heliocentric longitudes, and which the planets help modulate and affect. Hmm, not quite a nod at the Earth-facing quiet or the planetary geometry hypothesis, but it's a mainstream article about the planets affecting solar flares. We also have a few new studies on the action at a distance entanglement aspect of physics, one of the most complex and fascinating topics of the near future, worth a click. Unless, of course, you live in eastern Canada or those northern states, in which case you have something else to worry about. That's 7 a.m. eastern, and tomorrow does not look any better. High in the United States with the low offshore, and they reinforce the wind drive in the middle, and that just happens to point due south from the Arctic. Strongest winds are offshore, but wind chills are still diving into the negative 50s over land, and the snow is falling. My hometown of Pittsburgh is currently white. Also making headlines is Venezuela, declaring a nutritional emergency. They say their tight rationing failed to include climate and other restricting factors. It's backfired and they've run out of food. You should read the powers discussion they're having over finding a solution. Somewhat pitiful. But on a happy note, go like our Facebook page, the Mobile Observatory Project. It looks like this. Why not let us send you a free magnet? Info is right there. And my personal page has my name with myself and the little one, logo and back. You don't need to see our identification. Aha, here are the droids I'm looking for. Folks, we got the LIGO gravitational wave news, the opposition, and some much needed common sense on the topic. That's episode 15 of your deeper looks for the year. And of course, in a few hours, your Saturday dose of fly on the wall will be uploaded amazing topics coming on today's podcast. We've got pressure and precipitation expectations, followed by shots of our star to close at 6.20 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.